Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jumma mubarak to you all. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. In ahmaduhu, nasta'inuhu, nasta'afiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururina. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururina. Fusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yadihi allahu fila mudilla lah. Man yudlilhu fila hadiya lah. Wa ashadu la ilaha illallah. Wa ahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. Seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah, the one who has no partner. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu taqullah haqqat qatihi wala tamutunna illa wantum muslimun. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu taqullah wa kulu kawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yawfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuta illaha wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azeema ibad. And assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. It's such a blessing to be here with you all during this first Jummah of Muharram. Blessed and sacred month that, in and of itself, is one of the four sacred months within Islam and actually dating back to pre Islam, in which warfare and fighting are prohibited. And the word itself, Muharram, meaning that which is forbidden, that which is uh, inviolable, uh, that which is prohibited. And in a sense, because of its sacredness, because of its inherent sacredness, uh, it's understood from the tradition of the Prophet that uh, Muharram, after the month of Ramadan, is the most blessed month in terms of the Islamic calendar. And it is uh, regarded as Shahrul Allah, that the month of Allah, the month of Ramadan. Uh, and so this is a month that bears a strong significance for Muslims across the board, uh, whether Sunni, Shia, across the board, but especially uh, within uh, for our Shia, Sun, uh, Shia brothers and sisters, that this is a time uh, of mourning. This is a time uh, of, of grief. This is a time of commemoration. And a solemn time because of the, uh, the tragic martyrdom of uh, the grandson of the Prophet وسلم, Imam Hussein and his and his family and followers who, in the in the name of justice and in the cause of justice and standing up to that which is right, standing up to that which is wrong, and standing up to that which is oppressive, uh, gave their life for the sake of Islam, gave their life in the path uh, of this of this faith and uh, against those who um, had you had had become. Uh, tyrants in it. and this was not an ordinary sacrifice it was a sacrifice that uh, bore many different significances not just theological but uh, uh, sociological and political as well because the grandson of the process was not an ordinary person he was not just one an average Joe Smo. he was he was a uh, significant person not just by his lineage but also because of who he was because of uh, how the prophet of some would speak about him when he was a child, that this was a special person uh, alongside his brother, Hassan. And so we see that this is a very solemn time in this, in this aspect as well. But uh, in addition, the month of Muharram is one when we talk about the start of the Islamic New Year, that now we are 1,445 years after Hijrah, uh, that the, the, the year of Islam, or the, the beginning of the calendar of Islam, begins on this element of sacrifice, begins on this element of migration, it begins on this element of leaving behind that which you love and going towards that um, uh, with respect to holding on with full faith towards an uncertainty, towards a space that may not, we might not know what comes about it, but we migrate for the sake of Allah. In a similar way, with respect to the sacrifice of Imam Hussein, of leaving behind that which was home, to go towards a space because of what it, because of it being the right thing to do, uh, because of it being for the sake of Allah. Now, in terms of the details of what happened um, during Muharram, what happened especially on the tenth day of Muharram, during the day of Ashura, when the uh, the grandson of the Prophet Sallam, Imam Hussein was was martyred alongside uh, his family and followers, I, I strongly recommend uh, each of you all to go uh, and look up on our Muslim Space YouTube. We have a khutbah that was given back a couple of years back by uh, Sister Insi Aziz um, on the topic of beauty and justice reflections from the land of Karbala. She gives a very beautiful reflection that I can't do justice to in, in just being able to try and summarize uh, the, the uh, gravity of this tragedy. But 
what's important for us and why does Karbala matter? Why, why does Muharram matter? Why does this month matter for us? Um, Ali Rodio Anha said that people are enemies of that which they do not know. And it's just a product of our psyche that when we don't know something, especially we've seen this in, in our community, in the Muslim community, when we do not know something, when we uh, or of someone or uh, when we choose not to know or we choose to live in ignorance, we develop a kind of an enmity, a kind of hostility. We start to see a, a sense of inferiority. We, we see a very black and white uh, way of thinking that we're right, they're wrong. Um, and we become enemies of that. Uh, which we do not know. We become enemies of those who are then others, those who are uh, practicing incorrectly, those who are whatever it may be. And so for us in this time, when we look at Muharram, when we see it in its full nuance, that yes, we may have one uh, portion of the community that is uh, observing fasting, that is encouraging a celebration of New Year, and that is doing all of these different things. Um, but you have another portion of the community that may be in grief, that may be in mourning, that may be uh, lamenting, that may be uh, commemorating a sacrifice that's here, that it does not mean that, you know, there's, there's a, uh, that, that one is completely all the way wrong, one is completely all the way right, that there's a necessary place for us to be able to understand uh, the nuance of why people are celebrating this month or observing this month as they are. But what's most important for us is to be able to recognize with consciousness as as we go into this month of Muharram, it's not like any other month. It's not like just you know uh, another month off the calendar, but it's the month after the after the month of Ramadan that's the most significant. And so when we walk into this month, we don't walk into it ignorantly that oh, pretending like there was no karbala, pretending like there was no sacrifice of Imam Hussein, and just saying oh, just focus on the fasting, just focus on this, just focus on the New Year, Happy New Year, and whatnot and not even mention Karbala and not even mention Imam Hussein, because this aspect of people becoming enemies of that which they do not know has really real world implications, especially for minority uh, communities, communities that are minorities within faith traditions, especially for our brothers and sisters who are Shia. Uh, we see this in Pakistan, we see this uh, across the board with respect to the persecutions that sometimes take place, that uh, people's lives are taken, masjids, uh, massages are bombed, that processions are attacked, People are targeted and killed because of just their faith and how others perceive them uh, to be in, in, in a way because they don't know them, because they don't get to know them. They assume and they they assume and they, they breed this enmity and it leads to disastrous consequences. So for us in this day and age, um, in the space that we are, it, it, it's a... Uh, it, it, it is, is a folly for us to not go into Muharram with at least an, an, a proclivity to the nuance that this month bears a significant uh, tone of a, a very solemn tone, a very somber tone for many in the Muslim Ummah. This month also bears in general for everybody a aspect of sacrifice that sometimes gets lost in, in, in this kind of sometimes feels like a competing narrative. But what's important for us to know is that the sacrifice of Imam Hussein is one that is across the board. It's not something limited to just Shia Muslims. It's something that should be mourned, should be felt in the hearts of all Muslims because of not just who Imam Hussein was, but because of what this sacrifice commemorated, what 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 was involved in it, what what did it, uh, what were all the different facets in it, and of course because of the 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 aspect of who Imam Hussein was and who the Prophet saw as Imam Hussein. Uh, who he, he he raised his child up to kind of be, who, who who this person meant to him. And so in this aspect as well, this, this month is commemorated often by fasting. Um, you have uh, a, a tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fasting during, during this month, especially on the 10th of Muharram or on Ashura. And you have in the same, uh, in the same lens you have uh, within our, with, for our Shia Muslim uh, brothers and sisters that there's an abstention from joyous events. There's an abstention from uh, these kinds of events and gatherings in that way, but instead choosing to have more commemorative, more solemn events, uh, more uh, commemorative gatherings or majalis that uh, offer condolences, that mourn Imam Hussein and his family. And though fasting isn't generally uh, practiced in this, in this space, uh, there's still a practice of eating sparingly and abstaining from food at least until the afternoon time. And so you have these parallels in, in terms of sacrificing something in terms of giving into this, this space as well. But we know that in, in terms of, it, it sometimes becomes competing about the ritual that what did the Prophet do? What is this? What is that? Um, well, the Prophet had actually, once Ramadan had been prescribed, the fasting of Ramadan had been prescribed, 
had uh, actually, as narrated by Ibn Omar, had abandoned the fasting of Ashura. That did set it behind. That's still something that was an encouraged practice. But on that, uh, Abdullah Ibn Omar did not use to fast on that day of Ashura unless it coincided with his routine fasting by chance. So uh, sometimes it becomes very much so about the ritual that you should do this, you should do this. And we lose the humanity. We lose the substance of what does this month mean to each of us, whether it's Sunni Shia uh, or any of the in-between with respect to uh, our, our Islam. And we think about the essence of Muharram that each of us can take away. That um, when it comes to Muharram, when it comes to this month, we see both the Hijrah and we see Karbala. We see a sacrifice that is prophetic. We see a sacrifice of the Prophet's family. We see a sacrifice of the Muslim Ummah, the Muslim community at that time on the right path that left behind that which was for the sake of Allah and going towards um, that which full faith and uncertainty, but going into a space, starting the new year, not in pomp and not in you know glamor or anything, but starting the new year, starting this new period in their life um, in, in migration, starting this period in, in this life, going into a space that was unknown and solely with this aspect of tawakkul, with trust in Allah. Imam Hussein had said, because oftentimes it's, it's made to be a very political uh, uh, sacrifice that, oh, this was just a competition of uh, authority and Imam Hussein just wanted authority and take it back and so on and so forth. It becomes very watered down for the size. But Imam Hussein very poignantly said that I do not revolt due to disconsent, uh, discontent with Allah's blessing, nor out of arrogance. I did not rise as a corrupter nor as an oppressor. Rather, I wish to call for reform in the nation of my grandfather. I wish to call for that which is good and forbid that which is evil. I wish to follow the tradition of my grandfather and my father. And what's the takeaway from us, from this, uh, this, this aspect of him sacrificing, that this aspect of our Prophet Sallallahu migrating alongside his followers to a new land in this aspect of Hijrah, starting this, this new calendar year that, that uh, was to come for us, that the takeaway of us is that Muharram, when we enter this month, regardless of who we are, what community we're a part of, we come into this month, Muharram should be a month, not just a month of sacredness, that we understand that this is a sacred month. And we check ourselves because it is the month of Allah. So every action that we do is for the sake of Allah, that Muharram above all is a month of action. Muharram above all is a month of sacrifice. Whether you are fasting, whether you're abstaining from food, whether you are grieving, whether you are um, just going through this month as if it was another month, you are doing it with a heightened sense of awareness that because it is Shahrul Allah, it is the month of Allah, all the things that we do in this month are for the sake of Allah alone. Not that any other month that we do things are not for the sake of Allah, but particularly there's a heightened sense um, that because this is Allah's month, this is a month we are more aware of what we do, that the migration uh, in, in the hijrah, leaving one's home, going uh, in, in a time when there is not a GPS, in the time where you're going on foot, where you're going on a camel, days and weeks into a new land, into not knowing what will be there, whether you're going to make it through the night, can't pack you know, your whole home or like a U-Haul and just drive it all the way to Medina from Mecca and just settle into your new home and uh, you know, do all of that, that this migration of, of just your, your bare necessities, this migration was not for no other reason but for the sake of Allah. And the sacrifice of Hussein, as he says, was nothing but for the sake of Allah. That how are we going to now go through this month? What can we take away from going into Muharram, going into this month of uh, that which is inviolable, that which is sacred, but that which is a month commemorating sacrifice, that which is a month that starts on sacrifice, that which is a month that starts for sacrifice for the sake of Allah, that is for the sake of Allah. And there's many virtues that are lifted up as we spoke to a few of them, but from the tradition of the Prophet ﷺ, when we talk about this being a month of action, there is in the tradition, this aspect of fasting. Um, there's this tradition, this aspect to give more in charity to, uh, as it is the month of Allah to connect to Allah with respect to the Quran. Um, so what can we do in a sense? So whether we are we choose to fast or are able to fast, that might be a great place. Whether it is another way of observing our faith in terms of just building that connection to Allah, do that as well. Reading the Quran, connecting with Allah's uh, word, giving charity, sadaqah, sacrificing in the way of Allah, whatever it may be, 
is at the end of the day, it's it, the intentions are judged by one's motives. And so with what your intention is in terms of giving that fast or take doing that fast or giving that charity or reading that Quran, understanding that it is for the sake of soul pleasure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that just as Imam Hussein had sacrificed, just as our Prophet had sacrificed, going into this space was for no other reason but to seek the pleasure of Allah. That this sacred month offers us an opportunity above all, not to uh, amplify our differences and say who's right, who's wrong, what did the prophet say, what is this, and you know, just just attack each other's faith and attack each other's what's sacred to one another. But this month is a chance for us, above all, to be able to connect back with Allah, to seek the mercy and favor of Allah, to get a not just uh, you know get the most out of the things that we put forward, but also with respect to just uh, being able to grow in not only our relationship with Allah, but our relationship with one another. So as we enter this month, inshallah, as we close out here, as we enter this month of Muharram, entering it with the lens of seeing that we are going to see different things. We're going to see things that may feel strange. We're going to see things that um, we feel like we do not agree with or we agree with or whatnot. And opening, entering this lens with a bit of an open mind and seeing that there's actually so much that is to be offered, but also giving that aspect of significance, giving that aspect of sacredness to Muslims, regardless of how they are uh, observing this month. Uh, but being mindful that this is a month that um, that is in general, as the second we start on it, should tell us that it is by its nature being one of those sacred months. It's a month in which requires this heightened mindfulness. It requires a consciousness. It re it's going to require sacrifice. And one of those uh, foremost sacrifices made in this in this time, this month outside of the Hijrah, was the sacrifice at Karbala, was the sacrifice that uh, our beloved Imam Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet made alongside his family, standing up to those who had gotten to the point of power in the Muslim community, but became tyrants, became oppressors, and chose to sacrifice his own life, sacrificed um, that which he loved most, but in the face of that which was uh, oppressive, but because it was the right thing to do, that we do not forget these stories, we do not forget um, you know these kinds of sacrifices, and we do not forget what our religion is built upon. We do not forget what kind of calendar our calendar is built upon. It's not just a happy new year, but it's a year that reminds us that we're going to have to um, keep going. We're going to have to keep sacrificing, and we're going to have to do things that are going to be difficult at times, but sometimes are the right things to do, and that we go through this month aware that all of that which is which is being uh, lifted up and, and commemorated and observed is something that we can benefit from because at the end of the day this is a month that is not for us this is a month Allah. this is a month of Allah and uh, Allah asks just of that 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 we we strive in in Allah's way for the sake of Allah and so whatever we do going forward inshallah in this month go forward we do uh, in a way that is mindful of Allah in a way uh, that Allah deserves and in a way that is uh, in, 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 in harmony with the creation. The Prophet Muhammad SAW taught us that the one who's not showing gratitude toward or appreciation to or connected to essentially the creation and does not show the thankfulness to the creation similarly does not do so with Allah. So as we go through this month, let's find this as a month of sacredness let us find this as a month of connection to allah but through allah connecting to the people and through the people connecting to allah and not to make this a a a, a month of x's and o's and who's right who's wrong taking this as a month that recognizes it's, it has a lot to mean for any muslim any background um and that what it has to offer for us is something um that, that can help take us throughout any any other month and any other challenge that comes up because we have these these illuminating stories of sacrifice that our faith was built upon. So inshallah, may Allah enable us to be a people like Imam Hussein, like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like the blessed members of the household of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who become leaders of a people because they knew that sacrifice and striving in every moment that they had was uh, a, a walk in part of faith and not just an exception. And may Allah enable us to be a people of sacrifice, then through our sacrifice, make for a stronger connection to Allah, a stronger connection to the people around it, and a better world for uh, that which we uh, leave behind when we return to Allah, and allow us to leave this Juma better than we had come into it, and allow us to leave and enter every place better than we had entered it.
Rabbana Tukabil Minna, Inna Kantis Mila Vim as our Father Ibrahim prayed. Our Lord, accept this from us, accept this humble service that are all hearing, all knowing. Inshallah, Amin. Again, Jumma Mubarak to you all. We'll see you all soon. Inshallah, Assalamu Alaikum wa Barakatuh.